New England Patriots fans, Detroit Lions fans, thank you once again for crossing the streams with us here on the Locked On Podcast Network for this week five Locked On crossover episode with the Detroit Lions and the New England Patriots set to do battle in Foxborough Sunday, October 9th. And it's going to be a battle of two one and three teams that are on the cusp of something special. Is this the week where either team shows what they can do for the rest of the season? I'm your host, Mike DeBate, and I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. And I am joined by Matt Deary, who covers the Detroit Lions for Locked On Lions. And Matt, it's always an honor, always a privilege when you join me here on these Crossover Thursday episodes of the Locked On Podcast Network crossovers. Mike, uh, great to be here, and obviously uh, the Locked On Lions listeners excited to hear about the Patriots. Listen to you, the cusp of something special. I don't know about that, about that here in Detroit. Uh, and after watching the Patriots last week, although they played really well at times against the Packers, but uh, anytime I see Jelani Tavai on the field, uh, I don't know if any team playing that guy that many snaps is on the cusp of anything special, but this is an intriguing game. This is an intriguing game, certainly Sunday. I don't... This is, when we get to the picks later on, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Absolutely. Touche on that one. I'm glad that you mentioned that. I love it. Uh, it definitely is interesting. There is no question about it. And before we dive into some of those big storylines that we're going to be talking about, folks, today, Crossover Thursday is always presented by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun and it's easy to play. There's no competing with other players. It's just you versus the projections available. You don't have to compete with Matt and I. You're going on your projections. Pick two or five players and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. It can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter. That's right, folks. It is that easy. We love prize picks and we know that you will too. And first time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com promo code locked on. And there are a number of intriguing storylines, Matt, that the New England Patriots and the Detroit Lions will be monitoring as they take the field in Foxborough on Sunday afternoon, kickoff set for 1 p.m. The Lions are the visiting team, so I will extend my Foxborough hospitality to you, my friend, and oh, wow. let us know here in New England, what are some of the big or the biggest storylines heading into this week five matchup in the Motor City for the Detroit Lions? I'll say this, Mike, I think the big storyline, and my listeners know this, is the defense. Uh, it's abysmal. Mm -hmm. It's it's record-setting through four weeks. Uh, get, you, you score 45 points at home last week to against Seattle. And we're not talking about an Aaron Rodgers-led Packer team. We're not talking about Tom Brady and the Bucks. We're not talking about Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. This was Geno Smith and Rashad Penny, who came into Detroit last weekend and absolutely uh, de-pantsed the Lions. Uh, you score 45 at home, you should win. They gave up 48. They've given up the most points through four weeks of any team. It's not even close. Yet, this defense has been so bad, the storyline in Detroit is what are you going to do about it? Uh, Aaron Glenn is a highly thought of a defensive coordinator. We've been joking this week, future head coach Aaron Glenn does not look real good right now. Heard Belichick earlier in the week talk about how he knows Aaron, coached Aaron, and, and all these things. But that's a big storyline here is can the Lions just stop anybody? outside of three quarters against the commanders earlier in the year at home where they really got to Carson Wentz, uh, they've been embarrassed defensively. Uh, Jalen Hurts ran circles around him. Kirk Cousins lit him up, uh, although it wasn't Justin Jefferson in that Vikings run game. And then this past week, like I said, Geno Smith, who's improved, but they made him look like Dan Fouts. So it, it, it's a storyline worth watching. Now you you go up against Matt Patricia. Holy hell, right? Like, Lions defense against Patricia, who's never called offensive plays in his life, but now he's the OC in New England. What? Wait a minute, we can't call him the OC because he needs to still get paid by Detroit. So that's a storyline, too. How will the Lions defense go up against Patricia's offense, which I know you'll tell uh, tell our listeners has not been great either. So it'll be interesting to see how this uh, this all shakes this weekend. Yeah, without any question, I think this is the big storyline for both teams, and that is a struggling defense against what is likely to continue to be a struggling offense. And we're going to get into key matchups in just a moment, so I don't want to tip my hand too much here, but injury is obviously the biggest question, the biggest storyline right now heading into this matchup with the Detroit Lions for the New England Patriots. 
aside from the fact that the Pats are going to be donning their old school white helmets and their red jerseys for this one. There's going to be a lot of red in Foxborough this weekend without any yeah. question. But the real story is indeed the injury status, mostly of Mac Jones, who was on the practice field on Wednesday. He was tossing the ball lightly, looked a little bit more mobile, still walking with a noticeable limp. Just my honest gut reaction from what I saw from Mac today, Matt, I don't believe Mac is going to go in this game. I think mm. they're probably going to err on the side of caution, maybe hold him out one more week, give him a chance to get back to mobility. But the injury report will bear that out, and the rest of the week will bear that out. So as much as I don't think so right now, that could change between now and Friday or Saturday. But as we're looking at it right now, I do think that the Patriots err on the side of caution with Mac, hold him out one more week. That would normally mean that Brian Hoyer would be able to get the ball. Well, Hoyer only lasted two offensive series against Green Bay before going down with a head injury. He was not spotted at practice during the media portion on Wednesday. Not looking good for him. So that means that the Western Kentucky rookie... Bailey Zappi is likely to get his first NFL start. And a lot of people were considering the fact that maybe Zappi was not up to the challenge. Uh, the Patriots may look to bring in uh, an experienced veteran to get the start this week. All signs are indicating right now that Zappi would be the guy, and that's most likely how this will work out. Now, the Patriots did bring in Garrett Gilbert as a backup. If uh, neither Hoyer or Jones is able to go, then obviously Gilbert would be the backup quarterback for New England on Sunday. And that's right now a lot <laughs> different than the matchup wow. that we would have thought we were going to see in this in this uh, week five contest uh, just a few short weeks ago. So things can change in the blink of an eye with New England. Also, uh, you know, um, injuries to be monitored as well. John R. Smith, tight end, suffered what's being diagnosed right now or called a low ankle sprain. He's right now week to week. I don't think he will be able to go in this game. So Patriots offense a little bit banged up. They could use a little bit of a spark right now. And unfortunately, I don't see a whole lot in the arsenal to be able to do it. So this may end up determining the game. Can a struggling defense contain a struggling offense or vice versa? I think whoever wins that battle is probably going to be the team that comes out on top in this one. Mike, give me 30 seconds on uh, Zappi. What did you think of him uh, uh, last weekend? Uh, the moment did not get too big for him is probably the best thing that I can say for Bailey Zappi. He showed tremendous poise, uh, tremendous confidence, and I also thought that he looked to be someone that is ready to compete. He looked like he's someone that's ready to battle. But there are questions that uh, any rookie quarterback would have, especially one that was thrust into action and maybe wasn't necessarily prepared to be thrust into action. Everybody, every backup can say they're always ready to go in at a moment's notice, but until that moment arrives, you never know how you're going to really react to it. And the Patriots nursed him along. They had a very conservative game plan all game long. The kid has got an arm. I would like to see him tested a little bit more. Not sure if we're going to see that this week or not, but ultimately there are still questions about him being able to pick up pressures, pick up the blitzes. He was sacked three times. On Sunday, even though he did complete 10 passes for 99 yards, a nice touchdown pass, to, uh, you know, to, uh, to get yeah. himself ingratiated into the NFL life to Devontae Parker. But ultimately, that pressure and also some of the difficulties he had throwing when in motion could mean for a difficult day for the rookie on Sunday. So I think the Patriots are best off going with Zappi in this one, but it's really the lesser of all evils. They would definitely love to have their starter back as soon as possible. Should be interesting. I mean, I don't think there's there's any question about it. And, uh, you know, the Lion fans have, have been uh, just uh, yearning for one time, whether it's Brad Holmes or the GM before him, Bob Quinn, former Patriot, uh, to just draft a, a developmental quarterback. So they haven't done it in years. And it's kind of interesting that they may be going up against one of the guys that they sort of passed on, if you want to call it that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And look, Zappi definitely has an NFL caliber arm and there is an NFL caliber vision over there. It's a matter of whether or not he can harness it together. We've seen things come together very quickly for quarterbacks after a, maybe a shaky first outing. Uh, they get into a rhythm pretty quickly. So is this the week to do it? 
I know the Lions defense is struggling right now, but we'll see if they're struggling that much to allow a rookie quarterback to look pretty good in this one. But folks, it's all about the matchups. It always comes down to the matchups. And Matt and I, in just a moment, are going to discuss exactly what those matchups are going to mean for the New England Patriots and the Detroit Lions in this upcoming Week 5 showdown at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. But first, folks, I have a question for you, and that is, do you ever wish that before every NFL game, you could get up-to-date and accurate information before placing bets or looking in your fantasy lineups? Well, now you can with the Elias Game Plan app, the ultimate sports betting and fantasy companion for the NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball. Whether you're a part of a fantasy tournament, placing bets, or if you're just a huge sports fan and stats nerd like myself, Elias Game Plan has everything you need. Elias Game Plan is a sports app for the most trusted name in sports stats. That's right, the Elias Sports Bureau, official statisticians of U.S. Pro Sports League since 1913. And now you can have all the stats, the facts, and team player updates in the palm of your hand, all backed by their renowned research team. And with the new chat function, you can talk to them directly and receive the information you need to back your big decisions on betting and fantasy leagues. Plus, their newly added weekly survivor pool analysis keeps you in the game. Take this NFL season to the next level and download the Elias Game Plan app today. Choose from three game plans when you subscribe, either weekly, monthly, or annual, but I can get you 25% off your first month when you choose the monthly subscription. And don't let them fool you, folks. Matt can do the same thing with Locked On Lions. Just use our promo code Locked On NFL 25. Find Elias Game Plan Sports Betting in the App Store or Play Store today and use our promo code Locked On NFL 25. Patriots fans and Lions fans, thank you again for crossing the streams with us here on this week five crossover Thursday. Locked On Lions, hosted by Matt Deary. I'm Mike DeBate of Locked On Patriots. And Matt, in the previous segment, we talked about the big storylines heading into this one. But you and I both know that games often come down to matchups on the field. And that's ultimately what will decide who wins or loses. Battle of one and three teams, struggles on both sides of the ball for both of these squads, but they're oh, yeah. looking to put it all together. So when you look at this from a Lions perspective, what are the matchups you're looking forward to seeing most? You know, I, again, I, I want to go back to something Bill Belichick said on Wednesday, and I think he's spot on. Um, got a chance to listen to, to that, and uh, we're going to do what's best for the football team and all of that, and <laughs> week to, day by day. But he brought up the Lions run game and tackling. And I think that if the Lions can continue to pound the football, which they're going to have to do, especially with all the injuries they've had, offensively at wide receiver there will be some questions on whether or not Amon Ross St. Brown DJ Chark uh, Josh Reynolds any of these guys play this week so the Lions are down to bare bones at receiver now they're still scoring a lot of points Hawkinson at tight end has been really good the last couple of weeks especially last week and Jared Goff has played well but uh, something that Belichick said which kind of hit me and and I wanted to discuss with you is is the tackling can the Lions break out long you know, longer ru rushes. Can Jamal Williams, because I don't think Swift is going to play, can Jamal mm -hmm. Williams bust a couple of long runs, keep these drives going so that the defense can stay off the field? I I'm looking at that and going, if the Patriots swing and miss on a few tackles here and there and, and four and five yard gains become 12 and 13 yard gains, I think the Lions have a good chance to win and I think they'll stick with the run even more. So I look at how New England's linebackers, and I joked about Tavai before, but some of the others that are that are there, and certainly some of the veterans that they have in their secondary, how, how they wrap up. Because right now, Jamal Williams, Craig Reynolds, uh, even Justin Jackson, to an extent, have had really you know, success on the ground. The Lions, I think the offensive line will will push and do their job. It's been a really good unit. But I'm looking at you know yards after contact and some runs that could be busted out that I think could could maybe decide the game if we look at the end of the game and go, man, the Patriots missed way too many tackles on that run game. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a matchup to watch is, is how they'll be able to wrap up Jamal Williams, something Seattle did not do last week. Absolutely. If there is an area right now where the New England Patriots defense can be exploited, 
it's definitely against the run right now. And this may surprise a lot of people that aren't familiar with the Patriots and how they're doing business lately, seeing that, oh, well, you lost J.C. Jackson in the offseason. Your secondary must be decimated. New England's actually got pretty decent secondary play out of guys like Jonathan Jones stepping up and the rookie Jack Jones last week having a big game against Aaron Rodgers. I so love him. Even if oh, Jalen yeah. Mills is someone that is not able to go or be 100% because of a hamstring injury, I still like the way this secondary matches up against the passing game of the Detroit Lions. That being said, the run game right now, especially for the New England Patriots, a run defense, I should say, for the last six quarters dating back to week three against the Baltimore Ravens, has been very suspect. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that Lawrence Guy, a big defensive tackle, has been missing out of their lineup. Lawrence is such a big part of setting that tone in the interior of the defensive line in order to be able to stop the run. Without him present, it allows some of the runners to be able to break free and allows the offensive linemen to win some of their battles. If that's happening, New England's been back on its heels, and unfortunately the second level of that run defense with the speedy linebackers that they've tried to utilize, guys like Mac Wilson, Raekwon McMillan, Anthony Jennings, have not been getting the job done. So an old friend of yours, Matt, is in town this week oh, on God. the practice squad. And I'm wondering <laughs> if he may actually get a shot at being on the big roster this week. The um, I should say the active roster. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't say the big roster, but the active roster. And that's Jamie Collins. Because they are very much porous right now at that level where teams are getting to next level and they're able to run for big yardage. We saw the Baltimore Ravens do it, most notably Lamar Jackson. But Dobbins was able to run against them for big yardage in the second half. And then last week, A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones, they were able to run rough shot over this team as well. So that is a big concern. Jamal is running the ball as well as anyone right now. He's getting into the end zone. And even if Swift is not able to go in this game, I still think that the Lions may have the advantage here because of what the Patriots are lacking in personnel. Pats are going to have to go with a bigger lineup. I look for Christian Barmore. I look for Dietrich Wise. And I also look for Carl Davis to be the third guy in that as a nose tackle. And try to stop these guys up front. Because if you're getting to the second level against this defense, it means the Lions are having a very successful day on the ground. Great, uh, great mention of Jamie Collins. Yeah, I saw that uh, he's coming back and wearing number 99, which is interesting. And we'll see if he gets to play. What, what were you thinking in terms of a, ma- of a matchup to look at when, when you look at Detroit, New England, uh, Mike? Well, I'm going to flip the script and I'm going to go the exact opposite. I'm going to say that the matchup I'm looking forward to seeing is can the Patriots two-headed rushing tandem of Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson continue their success on the ground? You know if the Patriots are going with a rookie quarterback, they're going to be leaning on their run game. And the Patriots right now have the ability to be able to run on the Lions a little bit because that is one area where they are a little bit deficient when it comes to stopping and something that the Patriots might have success in. Lions allowing 165.5 yards per game, 5.6 yards per carry. These are areas where the Patriots might be able to exploit a little bit. So if Stevenson and if Harris are going to be able to have the same type of success they had in Green Bay, especially in those chunk runs they had in the second half, 152 yards, touchdown, 32 carries between the two of them. I expect the Patriots to be able to try to utilize that. A big key is going to be utilize pulling the guards, getting some of those gap runs in. The downhill runs have been very successful for New England, even when they want to sprinkle in a little bit of that outside zone that everybody's been waiting for. That's still their bread and butter. If the Patriots are hitting those, then it means that they're close and they're keeping a lot of pressure on that Lions defense. So I'm looking forward to seeing that without any question. Let me jump in real fast and just add to your point. I think it's a great one. The Lions defense has been so bad. It doesn't even matter, pass or run, really. Um, But this ought to be interesting this week because Dan Campbell has said they're going to make some personnel changes. What? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Demetrius Taylor, an undrafted defensive tackle, is going to be playing a little bit more. He hasn't played since the preseason, but they like him. Will they make a change at linebacker? You know this. Malcolm Rodriguez is going to be out there. Six-round mm-hmm. pick, the hard knock superstar. He's been awesome. But other than that, uh, they need help at linebacker. Alex Anzalone has been very mediocre. Uh, safeties have not come up and made enough tackles. There's been poor angles by the cornerbacks as well against the run, including Oruarie, who may sit in favor of Will Harris. So we'll see what kind of personnel changes they make. And if Aaron Glenn does not blitz as much, because any time that they blitz this past week, Seattle hit them with a, a quick run, and it was curtains. Yeah, without any question. And look, 
there's no question about it. When you look at teams like this that are struggling and looking for sparks, they're going to try personnel grouping changes. They're going to try to switch things up a little bit. Bill Belichick is very savvy when it comes to being able to make adjustments. Are the Detroit Lions able to look at what the Patriots do and use it against them and kind of throw it back in their face? Teams that have the temerity to do that to Bill Belichick have been very successful against him. So I'm going to be looking forward to that one. Yeah. And I know all of you are going to be looking forward to these matchups on Sunday at 1 p.m. from Foxborough, Massachusetts. Matt, I think we're almost at that point where we're ready to give our rubber stamp as to exactly what we believe will happen in this game. And when we continue here on this Locked On Crossover Thursday, Matt Derry of Locked On Lions and myself, Mike DeBate from Locked On Patriots, will provide you with our thoughts looking into our Belichickian and Campbellian crystal balls, respectively, wow. to tell you our thoughts on what we're, what's going to happen on Sunday at Gillette Stadium. But first, folks, as you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to help make it easier to find the people you want to talk to, and they're here to do it and make it faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. So LinkedIn Jobs will help you find the candidates you want to talk to, and they'll help you do it faster. Folks, did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? That's right. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Patriots fans and Lions fans, it is almost time to wrap things up on Locked On Crossover Thursday. Matt Derry of Locked On Lions has brought his wisdom and counsel the way only he can. Hopefully I've been able to drop a couple of pearls here and there when it comes to the New England Patriots. But Matt, this again is a matchup of struggling teams, uh, teams that I've shown signs of some talent on both sides of the ball. I know Detroit is struggling mightily uh, on the defensive side. New England continues to struggle on the offensive side of the ball. But there are flashes of what this team can do, both teams can do, when they put it all together. Fast forward, we take the Doc Brown DeLorean right to, half to, right to uh, uh, the uh, midway point in the field on, uh, um, on Sunday at Gillette Stadium. How do you see this one shaking out? What ends up happening? when the Pats and the Lions hook up in week five? Well, Mike, I have no idea. <laughs> Listen, here, let, let me just say this. All right, let me say this. Great answer. Perfect I'm, answer. I, I know. It's it's a total set the fence, wuss answer, but let me say this. I knew week one, all right? Mm -hmm. Philly, bad matchup, didn't like it, knew the Lions would lose. I knew week two. Carson Wentz <laughs> ain't coming to Ford Field and winning. That was So I was two for two. Uh, Minnesota, I thought the Lions were going to play well and fall at the end, and that's exactly what happened. And then last week, I thought they'd win. I really thought they would score at will on Seattle's defense, and they did, but their defense was just so bad. It was stunning to watch Geno Smith and Rashad Penny do what they did. And those aren't bad mm -hmm. football players, but my goodness, they look like 10-time Pro Bowlers. This week, <laughs> I have, Mike, I have no feel on this game. None. Zero. Like, I think the Lions could win, and the Lions have not won a road game under Dan Campbell. They're due. That Patriot team does not do much for me, and now you're starting a third-string quarterback. I mean, I would figure the Lions have a shot here, but, you know, if this – I'll say this. If this comes down to the kicking game, the Patriots have such an advantage, um, and I think that that could be where this goes. The Lions right now, at the time of this recording, have Austin Seibert. They believe healthy enough to come back and kick. They have the money badger, Michael Badge, uh, Badgley, ready uh, to come off the practice squad if they need him. But they've had hmm. big problems in the kicking game there. Punt, punt wise, they're fine with Jack Fox, and special teams have been pretty good otherwise. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll just say I think it's going to be very, very close. I do. I think it's going to be low scoring. Um, I don't think it's going to be one of these shootouts like we've been seeing from the Lions. So I'll, I'll say New England 23, Lions 21. Um, that's where I'll go. What, what, what do you think? 
unbelievable. I think we're almost exactly like-minded in this, where I agree with you. I think the Lions have every chance to be able to come in here, take it to the New England Patriots, and walk away with a victory, most of which were the reasons that I provided and we provided in the previous segment about the difficulties with the Pats running defense and how effective Detroit can be running the football. And listen, this team can score. There's no question about it. I mean, when they get into rhythms, Jared Goff's doing his thing. I mean, there's a lot to like with the way that the Detroit Lions are able to play, not just running the football, but also passing the football. And I'm on on Ross St. Brown is definitely one of the more electrifying and more aesthetically pleasing wide receivers I've seen in quite some time, not to mention one of the best names in pro sports. I just love that name. I loved it when he was coming out of USC. Still love that guy. But bottom line, what I'm looking for with the New England Patriots right now is to keep it close, run the football, and try to utilize special teams. And again, if you get Nick Folk inside the 50-yard line, he's been pretty much automatic, making just about everything, 58 or 59, I believe, straight from inside that mark and it really does speak volumes to how reliable the Patriots kicking game continues to be they got a little bit of a boost last week in the return game when the rookie Marcus Jones coming out of Houston really showed his ability to not just return punts but also return kicks so I think the Patriots uh, on the special teams level are going to be a little bit more solid than they were in previous weeks I, again, I think this is going to come down. It's going to be a razor-thin game. I don't like it being a huge, big showdown. I have the Patriots taking this one 24-21. to 21, So <laughs> I give the All Patriots right. an extra point. Maybe a yeah. Nick Folk extra point uh, does the, uh, uh, the battle. But again, I think this one's going to be close because I do think these two teams are evenly matched. And I don't know if either one of us can take that as a compliment, but I do mean it as one. So let's end on a high <laughs> note there. <laughs> no, I think it, I think it's going to be entertaining. And again, I think the Detroit fans, the la- and this this is this is for my listeners because they remember this. But years ago, after they fired Jim Schwartz, Jim Schwartz was the defensive coordinator for the Bills, and he came into Ford Field and Buffalo just wa- walloped the Lions. And Schwartz and and Patricia won't do this. Schwartz told his players, pick me up on your shoulders, and they carried him off the field. It was embarrassing for Schwartz, but he kind of got his vengeance against the Lions a little bit, and that's kind of who Schwartz was. Um, This time around, I I think there are plenty of Lion fans going, there's no way we can lose and get lit up by a Matt Patricia offense, can we? (laughs) After what he did here and what a disaster he was as head coach, not a surprise Bill brought him back, but you know, I don't think that that's going to be the case where they get carry him off the field. Uh, that's not his, his nature. I don't think, but I think there's plenty of line fans going, we can't, we can't really get lit up by Patricia. Can we, I think the lion's defense will be better this week, but again, the competition isn't what it was. I mean, DK met, there's no DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett's on your team. Uh, mm-hmm. so we'll see, but that two headed monster, like you said, is pretty good and be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, it will. It'll definitely be interesting to see what happens. And uh, I know Matt Patricia is definitely not the most popular guy in Detroit. Far from it. Uh, He's not that much more popular in New England, if it's any consolation (laughs) to Detroit fans. Uh, Yeah, there's still a lot of New England Patriots fans that are not happy with that whole offensive coordinator thing. Detroit fans, after the game, if you want a good... uh, piece of entertainment win lose or draw uh definitely check out some of the pats twitter and uh yeah google the hashtag matt patricia or just google the name and see what's coming up uh oh, on uh, on your uh, your your twitter mentions uh, click on that latest tab and uh things will probably be interesting one way or another but matt it is always an honor always a privilege i love the network uh giving us this opportunity to do these crossover episodes it's always a lot of fun. It's always informative for my listeners. There's some of my favorites and some of uh, um, their uh, most uh, you know downloaded episodes uh, for the week. So I definitely tip my cap to you, my friend, and I thank you for all of your wisdom and counsel. Patriots fans, check out Matt on Locked On Lions each and every day on the Locked On Podcast Network. Much like ourselves, he is free and available on all platforms giving you the very latest in-depth analysis and really some of just the best coverage in the business of any team out there in any stretch of the imagination. It's a must-listen for me. Check it out. It'll be a must-listen for you. Of course, you can always continue to listen to myself as well on Locked On Patriots. And Lions fans, if you want a little insight, we will continue to break down this matchup until kickoff. So definitely check that out and maybe even some of the previous episodes to find out the very latest on Mac Jones injury, Bailey Zappi, anything you want. We definitely cover it on Locked On Patriots. So 
Matt, on behalf of the Locked On Podcast Network, I thank you today for joining me, folks. Check him out wherever you get your podcasts. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts as well. And now that you've made this Locked On Crossover Thursday episode your first listen of the day, make your second listen. Our good friends over at Peacock and Williamson. Our good friend and colleague, Ryan Peacock, joins former NFL scout Matt Williamson to break down all of the latest stories from an NFL perspective. Like us, they are also free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. So smash that subscribe button to Locked On Lions, Peacock and Williamson, and of course, Locked On Patriots. On behalf of Matt Derry of Locked On Lions, I'm Mike DeBate. Stay safe, stay well, be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone, and enjoy Sunday's matchup.